Hello friends, my name is Preston Stroud. I'm here to give you another update on my Bedini technology testing. You can see here, this is uh, what was my tin coiler and I broke it down, rewound some of the coils. I found out a couple of them were rewound backwards and uh, rewound them and I've been putting it back together. But anyway, I've got um, what you can see here are six coils on it right now. 18 gauge wire with five wires on each one. So we're looking at uh, 30 transistors here firing at this moment. Let's look at it back. You can see here all the circuit boards. I've got 10 circuit boards with five transistors on each one. As you can see. And uh, I've run uh, many, many, many tests on this using some large batteries down here at the bottom. And uh, all the results have been disappointing. Uh, the Bedini technology does uh, create radiant energy spikes, high voltage spikes that do charge to the batteries and it creates more energy in the battery than what we're putting into it when you measure what's going into the battery. However, when you take the cost of this, the cost being the powering battery and what it costs you to get it there, um, every test I've ever run is showing uh, under unity. Basically, it's taken twice as much power as what I can get out of it. Okay? Even when you do this over and over and over to condition the batteries, it still turns out disappointing. So, I have been unable to get any over unity out of this. And this one kit here with this kit and the batteries down here and the test kit over here, um, I've got over $5,000 invested in this project right now. And I have uh, never, ever, ever, ever seen any over unity from John Bedini's technology. But I haven't given up on it. I believe John is right and there must be something to this and I'm still testing and trying to find the secret of what I'm missing. Uh, here's another test kit and uh, I'll show you what I've done recently. Someone on the, this one's got um, a six magnet rotor that's running and uh, a coil down here with three wires that are running to a little circuit board here. Okay. And what I'm testing out here with is uh, capacitors. Um, here's a capacitor. Here's a capacitor, and I've got three capacitors being charged. Okay, and here you can see a flag right here. Two copper wires are coming up, and there's a nail going around, and the nail hits the copper wires, makes a connection, and it dumps the capacitors into the charging battery right here. So here's what I'm showing you. I'm pumping 12 volts into this, and with 12 volts going in, you can see the, the capacitor jumping up here, and I'm dumping it about every uh, 28 to 30, you can see here, 26, 27, 28 volts. It's dumping constantly into this battery right here. Now, just uh, to give you an idea, I took this one here and ran it up to uh, the maximum capacity into the capacitors, and it ran up to 178 volts. So, you know a 12 volt battery is not going to give you 178 volts. What's that, uh, that voltage is coming from the radiant energy. So, John Bedini's technology is correct. It is creating radiant energy high voltage spikes that are going into here. All right. Over on this side, I've got John Benini's uh, three monopole kit here. Okay, there's a circuit board I've created to go with it. And I've ran extensive tests with that. And again, it does create radiant energy and more, you get more energy out of the battery than what you put into it. But when you look at the cost of the powering battery, I still cannot uh, get any over unity out of this. And I've turned around and uh, just recently bought his uh, kit the new addition that basically takes this, um, this is a new kit he's selling for $60, you can see here. And what this kit, circuit board, what this does is takes a capacitor, it takes this little um, coil on top and it generates energy from this coil. This isn't firing, this is just collecting energy, okay, as the magnets roll across it and it's running into a capacitor and then dumping the capacitor into another third battery or the primary battery. So I bought the kit here. I haven't put it together yet, but I'm going to put that together and run some tests on it. But I, um, I'd like to take it to a different stage and run a different test. I may actually line up more capacitors on here and use the powering, instead of going directly to the uh, charged battery, 
dump the full charge into the capacitors and then dump the capacitors into the um, the charging battery using the read switch here as a flag okay to dump the capacitors so the question is why am I doing that well there's a guy on the forum that uh, visited John Bedini some time ago and spoke with him and John mentioned that um, if you charge a capacitor then all of the um, impedance matching problems go away. See the problem is I think that maybe all my problems here of never ever ever receiving any over unity for many of these projects could be due to impedance matching although I've spent a year working on it. Don't know why I couldn't find it by now. But uh, I'm now taking it to another level. And John Benini said that if you um, if you charge a capacitor, that the the impedance in the capacitor is so low that the impedance matching problems go away. So you charge up the capacitor, you get maximum spike and uh, generation and voltage generation into the capacitor, and then dump the capacitor into your uh, your battery. So. That's basically what I'm doing here. Now, oh, let me tell you this. I do have some positive news about this test here that I'm running with a capacitor. I've run a couple of tests on this where I let it run for a day or so and uh, measure the results. And actually, um, it kind of broke even. When you look at uh, the cost of the powering battery and what you uh, got out of the charging battery, there was a break even. Now, this is a, actually a drastic improvement over all the other testing I've done. And all the other testing, it cost me twice as much energy as what I got out in the end when you look at the cost of the powering battery. So this one is actually turning out to be a break even, which means we might be onto something with charging capacitors and eliminating the impedance matching problems. So I've, um, I'd like to take that same test I'm doing here, which is showing some improvements with a break even here with John Benini technology. And I want to test it with this one, uh, charging capacitors. And if that shows improvements, then we'll move over to this, the big boy here, and test this one. So, again, I just wanted to share with you uh, where I stand right now and um, with my testing with John Benini technology. And I hope you guys, if you guys are having some better luck in showing over unity when it takes the, co the cost of the powering battery into consideration, please uh, contact me through my YouTube channel. And I would love to talk to you and share results and uh, discuss it. Because I, you know, like I said, I'm just not seeing anything very positive here myself. But I haven't given up on it. So I'm still trying. Alright guys, again, my name is Preston Stroud, and um, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Bye.